Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this Forest River Ibex 19 MBH model. All right, let's start right up front, show you how to get this thing hooked up. Uh, we're gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths ball on this model. Uh, so once you get your uh, tow vehicle backed underneath to get this thing latched on, lower it down using the electric tongue jack and then all you're gonna do is pick up on the uh, slide latch here and it's gonna slide forward. Make sure these ears right here drop all the way down and this is nice and flush and that's gonna make sure you are securely latched to the ball. To releasing is just the opposite. You're just gonna lift up on the back and slide this backwards and it should stay all the way back and that's gonna be released. A Couple other things that need to be hooked up to your tow vehicle are gonna be your safety tow chains. And these do need to be crossed underneath the coupler and clipped onto the receiver hitch. We're also gonna have your safety breakaway cable that needs to be connected to the receiver hitch on its own clip. Uh, cannot be routed through the safety chains and um, it's gotta be able to yank out of this little box over here in case you do actually get separated completely from the tow vehicle to apply the brakes on the trailer and bring it to a stop. Last thing that's gonna hook up to your tow vehicle is gonna be your seven-way cord here, or seven-way plug. This is gonna control your running lights, brake lights, turn signals, and the electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a brake control. All right, electric tongue jack, uh, up and down switch, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Do have a uh, service light on it for nighttime operation. And we have a manual override or manual crank option underneath this rubber plug, just pop it up out of there. You got a little crank handle that's gonna go down in there and you can crank this jack up and down if the 12 volt operation fails. So on the tongue jack on this, this has a, uh, an extendable foot. So once you pull the pin out, this is gonna have several different adjustments for height. So if you've got to go a long way down or you've got a really tall tow vehicle or something like that, you can just pull the pin out again and then you're going to have several adjustments on this leg. Uh, so you can adjust this to have to use the uh, power tongue jack for less travel uh, and make your um, operations quicker for all of the uh, processes for going up and down. Just behind that, we're going to find your 20 pound propane tank uh, for running any of your gas appliances on board. A uh, couple different ways to get in here. First, we're gonna have the, uh, the service lid here on top. To get into this, you're just gonna loosen up this little thumb wheel. You're gonna tip the little stud back and that's gonna allow you to open up and inside you'll have access to the service valve on your propane cylinder. For typical turning on and off, that's what you're gonna do. Uh, whenever you close this lid, make sure you do tighten this thumb wheel down or this lid will blow off. Now to remove this cover completely, uh, for exchanging or refilling the propane cylinder. Um, I find it easier to have this lid open. We're gonna take the little wing nut off the back here. Now when you take that off, put it somewhere where you're not gonna lose it because you're gonna need it. And that's gonna allow you to remove this cover off of that stud. And then you're just gonna lift the cover off. And that's gonna give us complete access to our LP cylinder. To remove this, make sure your service valve is closed, which is all the way to the right. Remove your LP service line, service hose there. But once you get those done, we're just gonna loosen up the mounting clamp here by turning this wing nut down here. We're just gonna turn this so that uh, clamp is loose, and then that's gonna allow us to lift our cylinder up and out. Now, again, this is a standard 20 pound cylinder. You can take this and get it exchanged at an exchange place or get it refilled, uh, whatever works best for you or whatever may be available to you. Just remember that anytime you're transporting this in your vehicle, it does need to be in the upright position for safety purposes. Um, once you get it refilled or exchanged, it's just gonna be the opposite for putting it back in. I'm just gonna drop it right back into the clamp. You can go ahead and snug this up. Now this just needs to be, you know, finger tight or hand tight, if you will. It does not need tools put on it. Um, it does not need to be over tight, just snug. So that way the cylinder stays there. Go ahead and reconnect your service hose. And now you are ready to put that cylinder back into service. Putting the cover back on. Again, keep the lid open because you're gonna need it to line up the stud here on the back so you can see. Once you get that popped through, take your wing nut that you put where so you wouldn't lose it. Again, snug this down, doesn't need to be over tight. Close your lid. 
tighten down the uh, thumb, thumb nut here on the top and you are ready to go. All right, so now mounting right behind the propane cylinder is where our 12 volt battery would go on this rack right here inside of a, a battery box. Um, here at Princess Craft, we use uh, interstate batteries, uh, RV Marine deep cycle batteries that are not maintenance free, which means you need to pop the caps off periodically, check the water level in them, use distilled water whenever you need to top them up. Um, all your cables will be hooked up accordingly before it leaves here. If you do need to change the battery out or you're gonna do it yourself, I recommend taking a picture of how the, uh, the, the cables are hooked up so you don't forget or sometimes colors can be confusing on them. Um, so it's a good idea to either take a picture or write it down. All right, moving on here. Uh, this little bracket right here on the side is gonna be for storing your seven way cord. It's just gonna take, all you gotta do is line up that piece there, slide it right down into there. That's gonna help keep all the water and stuff out and dirt, keep your cord out of the, off the ground, keep it clean. Uh, we've got your bat battery disconnect switch here. Very simple use. If you're in storage or you're not using it for a while, you're just gonna turn this to the off position, which means this little arrow is gonna be pointed off. When it is in use, you're gonna want it pointed on. If you're towing it down the road, you're gonna want it in the on position. Right here in the middle, kind of behind where the battery's gonna be, is gonna be a big high amp circuit breaker. It's a 100 amp circuit breaker for the 12 volt system. So this is gonna be your, your main inlet for 12 volt. There's a little flap or lever that'll pop out on the side here if this thing trips. You just have to push it back in if it does trip. Um, 100 amps is pretty big, so it'd take quite a load to get that thing to trip. Uh, this trailer is going to be equipped with four corner stabilizer jacks right here. Uh, you've got one in each corner of the trailer. You're going to have a crank handle that's uh, going to fit onto that. Again, these are going to be for uh, stabilization, not leveling, not lifting the trailer in any way. Uh, once you level the trailer side to side, front to back, then you just run these down to the ground and you snug them up either using the supplied crank handle or you can get an attachment for your drill that makes it a quicker process. Uh, these are pretty long winded, so the drill, uh, drill adapter is really nice. So right up front here on the off door side of the trailer, we've got your manufacturer stickers. We've got uh, tire loading information with tire pressures, tire size, uh, weights, all that good stuff. Make sure you read those stickers and know those stickers so you know where you need to be. Uh, our front pass through storage compartment here with a uh, baggage door held up by a magnetic uh, catch there. Just gonna be a thumb lock and then we've got a key lock on the other side. Uh, moving back just behind the baggage door, we're gonna have your two city water connections, if you will. Top one's gonna be our freshwater fill. Uh, so this is gonna be for carrying water on board in our freshwater tank. You're just gonna put your water hose in and turn the water on and let it fill up until it backwashes out or you can monitor the monitor panel on the inside of the trailer. I'll show you where that is if you don't want to completely fill it. Um, and you can, and then I'll also show you how to use the water pump to get water out. The connection below that's going to be our city water connection, uh, which is actually going to be for hooking up with our water hose and our water pressure regulator. All you're going to do is hook it up, turn the hose bib on, it's gonna supply water to the trailer. You're good to go, no pump necess no pump needed. We got a label here on the side that says fresh water drain. That's just letting you know it's in this area. So if you look right under the trailer here, it's gonna be this right here. You're just gonna take that cap off and that's gonna allow your fresh water tank to drain. This trailer is equipped with a six gallon gas electric water heater, which means we can either run it on gas, 110 electric, or both for faster recovery. Uh, a couple things going on here. Down here in the middle bottom is going to be our drain plug uh, as well as an anode rod which does have to be replaced as it wears out. Um, it is recommended to remove that and drain the water heater when the trailer is put away for a period of non-use and also for winterization you can just pull that out leave it out and that way everything drains out of there. It's also a good time to clean it out from any um, debris or deposits or anything that may have settled inside the tank. Uh, inspections periodic inspections opening the door up here looking for uh, insect nests or anything that may be built in the burn chamber that could affect the operation of it um, a little compressed air can go a long way if you've got a, a cobweb or something that's getting in the way of gas flow a little switch down here on the bottom left is going to be our electrical on off switch for the 110 operation 
So if you want to run it on 110, you'll have to have that switch in the on position. Now, anytime you're going to run your water heater, you want to make sure it's got water in it first. Obviously, once you get hooked up and everything checked and going, you should. Good way to find out is to open up this pop-off valve right here on the top. Um, as you can hear there, it's just air pressure. So there's actually no water in that tank yet or there's not enough that it's actually completely full, right? So we want the tank as full as we can get it before we turn any uh, heating operation on so we don't cause any problems with the water heater. Now to open and close this thing, it's just gonna be this little D loop right here. It is spring loaded so you can pull it out and twist it. You're just gonna line it up with the slot in the door, give it a little pull and a twist, and then you can fold it over. Now they do make insect screens that can go on these uh, to keep the dirt daubers out, which do like to get in and build nests and affect the operation on the gas side. A uh, couple of more drains while we're down here. Gonna be these two right here, underneath the water heater, underneath the trailer. Uh, those are gonna be our low point drains for draining the fresh water system uh, for again, storage or winterization purposes. Now Forest River has put a notice on the side of this trailer about checking the wheel lugs. Uh, they do recommend that you check them um, at a, to 100 foot pounds, checking them at 50 miles, 100 miles, and 200 miles. And that's after they've been removed and also when new for its first trip. So it's a good idea to check them, own a torque wrench, and do a periodic check. We also recommend checking them before you hit the road for any trip. Uh, big black vent here on the side is going to be for our vent hood for the cooktop. Uh, this does open. You just put your fingers in these little slots right here. This lid is going to pop open um, and allow ventilation actually out of the trailer when you're cooking. Uh, to get it to close, you're just going to push back in those same two spots where you popped it open and it's going to close. Make sure you get it closed before travel. Um, we've seen those come out due to wind and things getting in there, flapping them around and ripping them out. All right, so this big black area here is gonna be the backside of our refrigerator. A Couple things in here. 110 outlet right here for you is where it's gonna be plugged in at for the 110 operation. This is gonna be our control board. There can be some fuses on there that um, if you're working over the phone with somebody, they may ask you to check. So good to know where they are. And another good thing here is gonna be this little gas valve that's right here. So it's electronically controlled with this. And then there's a manual knob right down here that you can turn off. So if for some weird reason, this thing gets stuck in the open position. You don't need or can't or want to turn off the LP gas to the whole trailer. You can manually close that gas valve to keep gas from flowing through. Uh, another thing to inspect for in here is gonna be bug, bugs again, looking for anything that may have gotten in and uh, cause any operational issues. All right, so putting this cover on, We've got these four uh, pieces down here. You're just gonna line those up, close this down, uh, line up the top clips. They're gonna push in. Should give you a little bit of a pop when they go in. And then these actually need to be turned to lock. So right now we're unlocked. That's gonna be the lock position. It actually spreads the clip out and holds it in place. All right, uh, we talked about uh, tire pressure, lug nuts, make sure again that you keep up with that. Uh, you'll do yourself a favor by doing so. The uh, furnace exhaust is right here, it's a suburban furnace. Uh, it says hot, it's gonna get hot. Uh, anytime you're using the furnace in the winter time, uh, this is where all the exhaust gases are gonna come out or the, the burnt exhaust gases, uh, it, does dis it does put off some heat. So watch your hands, don't cover it or do anything. Again, they do make a uh, bug screen to go over that to keep the dirt daubers out. This trailer is equipped with a black tank flush. So when you get, um, thank you. Uh, so whenever you get ready to dump or after you've dumped your black tank and your gray tank, you can hook up a black gray water hose here. You do not want to use the same fresh water hose that you use for fresh water for the trailer. You want a designated hose for this, hook up to it, have your black tank waste valve open and just turn it on and let it go for about five to 10 minutes. That's gonna really give that tank a good flush. It's a good thing to do at the end of your camping trip before you leave. Um, and then just do, it, do a good job and it'll help keep your tank uh, clean so you don't have any clog issues. Uh, so down underneath, we're gonna have our um, dump station. 
Uh, this is where we're gonna hook up to our sewer hose. It's gonna be a bayonet twist fitting that goes on here. You're just gonna line up the receivers with the ears here, just twist it on. Uh, once it's on, it's gonna run over to your dump and then our two pull handles for our valves are right here. Uh, the forward one is gonna be our gray and the back one's gonna be our black or galley and wastewater. Uh, gray is gonna be sink and shower water and black is gonna be toilet only. So we always recommend doing the black first, following it with the gray to help kind of wash everything down. Um, if you're gonna be camping a long time, you can leave the gray open and everything will just kind of go out as it fills up. Um, black always has to stay closed until it's full or until you're ready to leave the trip. Otherwise, all your liquids run out, all your solids settle and you end up with a problem. Okay. All right, on the back end of the off-door side here, we've got your cable satellite hookup here. Um, it's just a coax connection. I'll show you how to do the other connections on the inside if you're gonna use those. And that's gonna bring us to our 30 amp 110 power connection here. Um, let me show you how this hooks up. So we've got three prongs here. One of them's kind of an L shape. It's gonna have the same thing on the trailer side. We're just gonna match up those two L-shaped ones, give this a little twist to the right, and then we're gonna use this plastic collar here and we're gonna lock this down good. You want a good snug connection here so we don't get any arcing or overheating. Uh, the better the connection, the less chances you are of having any power issues there. All right, moving on to the back of the trailer. Uh, we are already prepped on this trailer with a, for a Furion rear observation camera or backup camera. So it makes it a pretty cool, easy install. It just, the, the face plate comes off and the new camera installs in there and plugs in and you're pretty much ready to go at that point. Uh, rear bumper does have some storage in it. You just pull these caps off the end here. Uh, you can fit a sewer hose in there for storage. It's a good place for sewer hose storage. It is a metal bumper. Um, I do give a little bit of caution when you're putting your hoses in or taking them out that you try not to get them snagged being that it is metal, there could be a sharp piece on the inside or something that could do damage to your hose. So just give some caution there. Um, spare tire. If you've got a flat and you need to change it out, this is gonna be your spare. Just take off the two lug nuts and then you can pull this off. Now, if you've got to lift the trailer to do a spare change, um, you wanna lift on the axle. I'm, you wanna, you wanna jack up on the frame if you can get to it. If you've gotta go on the axle, you wanna go as far out by the wheel as you can. Uh, so we don't end up bending the axle. Never lift in the middle of the axle. Our roof access ladder. So this trailer is equipped with a uh, GoPower uh, flexible 100 watt panel installed on the roof here. So there's really not a whole lot of maintenance for solar, which is great, but you do need to clean the panel periodically to try to keep the debris, the dirt buildup and things like that off of the panel. Now, another option on this trailer is also gonna be the uh, Rhino Rack uh, RVT rails here that can be, uh, a, so a roof rack can be added to this trailer pretty easily and uh, give you some storage up here on the roof. So let's talk about a little bit of maintenance. You can see the edge of the roof here and all the way around and everything that's up here has sealant on it. This stuff needs to be checked every 90 days. Um, checking for gaps, pits, cracks, anything like that that could allow water intrusion. We wanna keep water out, absolutely keep water out. Um, if you can't get up here and do it yourself, you need to have somebody who can check it out. And it's a good idea to run it through a, uh, a service facility at least once a year and let them get up and do a professional inspection for you to make sure nothing major needs to be done. All right, so Forest River has put a notice on the bump, back bumper here about adding anything that they haven't already put on it uh, could void your frame warranty. So the spare tire per Forest River is the only thing that is supposed to be added to this bumper. So you don't want to add a, uh, uh, a receiver and put a cargo rack or a bike rack or anything like that on there. Forest River says that spare tire is it. Let's move on around to the door side here. Uh, we've got a big access right here. Uh, top window is going to be for the uh, top bunk in here, but we do have an access door to the bottom bunk, which also gives us a big storage area. So you can get in and out of the bunk here if you want. Uh, this bottom actually tips up and gives you a big storage area. This can actually be secured against the wall. Um, it's got a clip or a pin over here against the wall that can latch that in. 
and you can store something of good size in there. Uh, while we're here, let me go ahead and show you the fire exit window here. Uh, you're just going to yank this, this red knob here. That's going to remove the screen. And then to get your fire exit window open, you're just going to push this plastic lever in, pop it out, and then the window will push out. Now, you can just use it for ventilation by latching it here. If you want it all the way out, you're just going to push it all the way through. That's going to allow the entire window to swing open and allow you to crawl out. Now this door can be latched with a deadbolt. It also has a key lock for the uh, paddle from the exterior. Just below that, you're gonna see our LP Quick Connect hose here, which is designed for our exterior griddle or another type of exterior propane accessory that you may wanna use. Now these do have a Quick Connect port on them. So this is gonna be your hose end. So you just push this little collar back right here then you're going to push your hose in and that collar is going to snap in over it. Now this is also a valve, so there is a lever here that does need to be opened up to allow the gas to flow. And that's also going to lock that collar shut so you can't accidentally disconnect. Now the back end of your griddle is going to have the same connection. It's going to be the quick connect connection again with a, uh, a gas valve lever here. So that's also going to have to be open to allow gas to flow through. Now the, uh, the griddle here is actually really cool to light. You're just gonna push the knob in and you're gonna turn it. It's got a built-in striker, so you're just gonna keep turning it until you get it lit. If you're curious if it's lit, just take the griddle top off and you can actually access the burner. Um, so you can get in here and you can clean and do all that kind of stuff. But this is gonna be your igniter right here. Uh, so you can find out when it's lit instead of guessing. And then we've got your uh, grease trap right here. Uh, so you just, Scrape everything right down this hole, and we've got your cat, your grease, grease trap right there for it. Um, all this stuff hangs up on the wall on the outside. These ha this has these safety clips here that keep this from accidentally sliding off of the rack. So to get this off, you're just going to pull these up and out. You can see they've got a little clip. Again, don't forget to remove your gas line here before you take this off. Uh, once you get there, this is just going to slide off, and then you're going to store this. It's got rubber feet on the bottom, so it's okay to set it on the floor in the trailer or wherever necessary. And then to get this off, it's just going to tip up from the bottom, and then it just lifts off of the track here on the side. Now, these are going to fold in and store, so you're just going to pull up on them. They're spring-loaded, and then just fold them in like that, and that's going to be for storage. Just coming in the door of our Ibex 19 MBH here. Um, to the right, we're gonna find our fire extinguisher for putting out fires that may occur in here. Biggest thing on this is little green button on top. You're gonna to wanna to push that down, make sure it pops back up. It's gonna tell you that the uh, fire extinguisher still has some pressure in it for you. To the left, we're gonna find our JBL speaker mount. Um, speaker comes with the trailer, um, and then it's got the mount right here on the wall. There is a tool here so you can tighten this speaker into the mount uh, so it doesn't fall out but if you want to take it out i mean you can take it with you pretty much anywhere you're just going to loosen this up enough to uh, lift the top so the tool store is right there on the side which is nice but the top's going to lift up which allows you to tip the speaker out and then you can take that with you outdoors or wherever you want to take it uh, just above that we're going to find a couple other things we've got a uh, bottle opener so on your way out the door you can pop your bottles uh, we've got a couple of key hooks there for you or just storage hooks. We've got a USB charge port right above that. And then we've got a few switches. First one's gonna be for our electric awning out here, extend, retract, just that. Uh, extend is gonna extend the awning away from the trailer. Retracting is gonna bring it back to the trailer. Uh, make sure it's fully retracted before you travel. And when you extend it, make sure that it's not gonna hit anything as it goes out. Uh, next to that's going to be our awning LED light on off. So the awning has a full length LED strip that runs along the trailer side, as you can see there. Um, so that's going to be for that. And then we've got our porch light switch. This is going to be a three-way switch. Dead center is going to be off. Up is going to be a bright white light and down is going to be an amber light for the porch light. And then we've got our interior light switch. Now this is going to run all of the main mm -hmm. cabin lights in here. Um, except for the bunk. So this will turn all your overhead lights off um, that are up on the ceiling. 
up in the front of the trailer we're equipped with a jackknife sofa and a murphy bed so we're going to cover all of this and then i'll show you how to do the uh, sofa and the murphy bed we've got a uh, storage compartment um, over here also down low again we've got another usb charger our gfci outlet with a trip reset green light means everything's good to go if it gets tripped, no light means, hey, something happened, something got plugged into me and I've tripped. Um, you can just push the reset button, green light should come back on. If it continuously trips, you've got something plugged in that's no good, or the outlet could be bad, something else could be going on there. I've got a switch here. This is going to be for our lighting inside of our wardrobe cabinets on, on, <laughs> on each side of the bed here uh, inside the wardrobes. And then we've got our inverter remote switch for turning the inverter on and off. Um, it's very easy to use. You just push it and it's going to turn on that little light right there. It'll turn on and that tells you that the inverter is on and running. Uh, we have a lot of the same stuff over here. Uh, again, we've got an, another USB, out, uh, USB charge port, some 110 outlets over here. Um, again, we've got a wardrobe cabinet, uh, just no lower storage cabinet on this side. All right, so let me show you how to do the uh, jackknife sofa here. Uh, very easy. You're just going to lift up on it. Now, before I close this down, the inverter is actually mounted under here. You can see it right down there. Um, once you get it all the way up, it's just going to kind of naturally tilt all the way back and then lay flat. Now, that's going to allow us to lay our uh, Murphy bed down by using this latch here. Just push back on the, the platform a little bit and release that latch. And then that's going to allow you to lay this down. Now, this is going to give you access to some more storage um, up in the very front of the trailer on each side of the bed. And then you've also got your uh, bed lights here, one on each side that are controlled um, with the push buttons on the face of them. Which brings me to the lights on the ceilings. They can be turned off individually uh, with the push buttons on the face. Now, to store this back up to the uh, upright position, we're just going to grab the platform underneath the mattress. We're going to push it all the way back. And then that's going to latch back in and hold it up for travel. Now, to, and then to put our uh, couch back up, we're just going to pick up on the bottom of the couch. Once it gets kind of all the way up where it won't go anymore, you're going to kind of give it a down and forward push, which is going to flip it over and bring the back up. All right, so this trailer is equipped with um, shades. So all of these shades are just pull down shades. These are gonna give you privacy. They're also gonna be uh, light blocking to some extent. Uh, so you just pull them straight down. They are tensioned with these strings that you see on each side. Uh, so be cautious as you're pulling these up and down. If you stretch these strings out too much, then the shades won't stay up. They just start falling down. So when you pull them, try to pull straight down and try not to have them move around too much. Uh, this is gonna be our other fire exit window for the trailer. Um, it's gonna work the same way as the one that I showed you for the door at the uh, bunk. Pull the, pull the uh, red knob here, pop the screen off, and then we can uh, pop this window open, ventilate it, or all the way out for escape. Now overhead is gonna be our Connex 32 inch TV in this trailer. It's 12 volt powered. We do have a travel strap around it that can be released. It's just a clip right here, which will allow us to pull this TV out and swivel it around. You can move it to different positions, whatever works for you. Uh, a couple of connections back here on the wall. Again, this is gonna be our 12 volt um, outlet port for the TV. Um, if that red light's on, this should all be working and plugged in. And this cable right here is gonna be currently working for our over the air antenna. Um, red light on for the booster, which means the antenna's powered up. It, that's where it's gonna be looking for its signal. Now, if you wanna hook up to park cable on the outside, you're gonna push that button and turn the light off. That's gonna allow the park cable signal to flow through and to the TV. Now, if you wanna use an exterior satellite hooked up, you're gonna take your uh, satellite and hook it up on the outside. This top coax is going to um, be to the input to your satellite receiver. And then most satellite receivers today are going to be an HDMI out to the TV, which you'll hook up directly to the TV. Um, 
Now this, this unit is equipped with a WineGuard Air 360 antenna, which is also Wi-Fi ready, so you can get like a router add-on device for it, uh, which will allow you um, some 4G enhancement and Wi-Fi uh, lock-in for and security for internet purposes. Just remember to make sure you do secure your TV back to the wall with a strap when you get ready to travel so it doesn't extend away and bounce and rip out of the wall. Moving over to our galley. Um, same type of shade back here behind the uh, the sink. Now the window is a little different. It's going to have it's going to be a slider, so you're going to pull out on this latch in the middle, and which will, then we can slide the window back. You can also open the screen on this one, uh, which is great for cleaning the window or anything like that, or just having the screen out of the way. Uh, when you close it, you'll slide it all the way as far as it'll go. You'll want to pull out on that latch again and get, push it a little bit further. Now our sink has a sink cover here, uh, which gives you a little more countertop space if you don't need access to the sink. And it's also got a nice um, shower head uh, or spray head here for the, uh, for the water. Now to control water flow, uh, you're just going to take the stem. It's going to move in and out from the uh, faucet, head, uh, faucet stem here. Temperature control is going to be away from you or towards you. So back towards the wall is going to be hot, towards you is going to be cold. Uh, do have a sink stopper in there, so if you do need to catch water and hold water in the sink, you can do that. Right underneath, we're going to find another 110 outlet and a light switch. The light switch is going to be for your uh, spice rack storage here or whatever you would like to store here. You can see that switch just gives you some light. And this is just a bungee cord that's going to keep whatever uh, you put in there in there. Overhead, a couple storage compartments here for you. Our vent hood with a light on it and also a fan. Remember we talked about the vent on the exterior of the trailer that does need to be open if you're gonna be using the vent hood. And we do have a two burner suburban cooktop in here. Um, all you're gonna do is turn whichever burner you want to to the light position. Take your stick lighter or match or whatever kind of lighter you wanna use um, and light your burner, do your cooking um, as you would. Uh, let your burners cool before you close this. This is a glass uh, cooktop cover. We don't want you to cause any damage to it or it crack on you or anything like that. So let the burners cool first. Below that, we're gonna have your uh, convection microwave. It's gonna be a turntable style plus convection so it can be used for cooking pizzas and all kinds of good stuff. Storage compartment here. Um, if you need access, what does that say? Remove the waterless trap before using mechanical drain cleaning devices. Oh. Um, so Forest River is equipping this trailer with a waterless P trap. So you don't have the normal like P uh, trap that you would have in here. You're going to have this white device right here, which actually has like a sock in it, if you will. Um, so you can't use a plunger on it. You also don't want to run like a snaking device or anything like that through it because you will damage it and it'll no longer work. Uh, so this is also equipped with the road vac, uh, vacuum system. So it's got the, uh, broom vac down here at the floor. And then you've got a hose vac here. Now, Forest River does not provide the hose kit for this, but it is an option, something that you can get. Uh, so to use the floor vac, you're going to sweep all your uh, trash over to the floor vac here, and then you're just going to open the lid. And it's going to suck everything into the vacuum, which is going to uh, store all that in the bag that's back here behind the cover. So let me show you how to get that off. You're just going to pull this little latch right here to the side with this hole pop the face off and that's going to give us access to our bag and our filter. So the bag um, has to be hooked up to the back side first. Um, you're just going to push it onto the collar that's back there and then you're going to take your lid and secure it. You're going to put on the left side of the door first and then the right side or no side. Just like that. Now, if you want to use the vacuum portion of this uh, with the hose, you're going to slide this little door over. Your hose is going to attach right here, and then you'll use the on-off switch right here to turn it on and off. Uh, while we're down here, let's talk about your WFCO uh, power distribution panel. You've got your 110 breakers and your 12-volt fuses in here. Uh, it's a good idea to get a variety pack of those 12-volt fuses. Keep them on hand in case you do blow one. Uh, they can be purchased just about anywhere. They're pretty standard blade style fuses. We've got your LPCO alarm over here. 
uh, we've got a, is that LPCO? Yeah. Uh, so if you get a LP leak or a, a carbon monoxide detection, this is going to go off and make a bunch of noise and be like, hey, get out of here. Um, this comes with a Dometic two-way refrigerator, which means it's going to run on uh, 110 electric or LP gas. Uh, so two buttons, pretty easy to operate. We're going to have our main on-off button. If the whole thing's turned off, no lights, no nothing. Uh, when it turns on, you're going to hear that initial beep. Light's going to come on. And right now we're set in auto mode, which means it's automatically going to select your most reliable source. So if you're plugged in at your campground and it's good 110 power, it's going to run on 110. Power goes out. You've got 12 volt and LP gas on the trailer. It's going to automatically switch over light up the LP gas side and continue to cool. Um, if you want to manually force it to gas mode, you just push that button, the light's gonna go off. It's only gonna operate in gas mode. If it does detect any kind of operational issue, the little check light there will come on. Um, these don't make any noise uh, when they're running. They make no noise and they take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to cool. So give yourself plenty of time um, before your trip to get it cold. We also recommend that when you get ready to load it, don't overload it and put, um, if your stuff can be pre-chilled before you put it in, that'll even help even more so. Now to open these doors, it's you're just gonna pull them. That handle's gonna kind of naturally rotate, which then pushes the um, latches down there and lets you open it. Cabinet back here, um, got, your, got your mirror on the face of it, some storage cabinets. Uh, in the very back in the bottom, you're gonna find a key lock safe. Uh, you'll get a key that comes with a trailer to get into the safe. Uh, below that is going to be our uh, furnace output. So when you're running your furnace, all your heat's going to come right out of that right there. All right, let's cover things up on the ceiling real quick, and then we'll go over our dinette area. Our smoke alarm up here on the roof is going to be 9-volt operated. Check it periodically. Make sure the 9-volt's good in it. Make sure the smoke alarm works. Keep yourself safe. Um... And then we've got our air conditioner back here. So a couple things going on with the air conditioner. We've got different flaps on it on the sides uh, so we can control how the air blows. We've also got a big one that blows straight down here that you can open and close. And then we've got a filter on it. Um, so the filter's right here on the front. So to get this open, you gotta pop this little screen down right here and attached to it, you will find your filter. Um, all you've got to do is work this off of here. Try not to bend it up or damage it, rip any holes in it, because it can be rinsed and reused. Uh, let it dry before you put it back into service. Just clip it back onto this vent. And then we're going to take our vent, we're going to pop it back into the air conditioner. And that's pretty much it for the air conditioner other than thermostat operation, which we'll cover here in just a second. Um, on our dinette, again, we've got some storage overhead. Uh, we'll find our monitor panel back here. So if you want to check your tank levels, um, you'll just push the corresponding little button by battery, fresh, black, or gray, and you'll see a corresponding light. So fresh tank right now shows completely full. If you were filling it up and you only wanted to carry, say, a third of a tank, you would monitor here until that third light comes on, and then you can shut your water off. Um, all right, we have another water heater operation switch in here, which is gonna be for the gas side of the water heater. It'll be this one right here. You just flip that on, that little fault light's gonna come on. Uh, when normal operation takes place, that fault light's gonna turn off and stay off. Um, again, this is for ga uh, the gas side operation only. The switch on the outside on the water heater is for the 110 side. Uh, the other switch over here is gonna be our water pump switch. So for dry camping, or we're traveling down the road and we need access to water, we're gonna use our water pump switch here. We're just gonna flip it on. Water pump's gonna turn on, pressurize the system with the water that we have stored in the fresh water tank, and we're gonna have water anywhere in the trailer that we need it. Now the three sw switches below that are gonna be for our holding tanks, so fresh gray and black, all have heating pads on them. Uh, so if you're staying in below freezing temperatures, you're just gonna turn the switches on as to which tank you don't want to freeze. Um, which is probably all of them. If you have water in all of them, just flip those on. There are little heat pads on them and keep everything from freezing. All right, 
That'll bring us down to our Dometic uh, touch capacitive thermostat for our air conditioner and furnace. So three buttons on this, or not really buttons because all you do is touch them. When we cycle through the screens, the first one that's going to come up is going to be, it's just going to say off when we first touch it. When we do it again, it's going to bring up our fan. So here's where we can set our fan speeds, low, high, or auto. We recommend just leaving it in auto and let it do its thing. The next screen is going to be cool. And we'll use the up, down arrows to set our desired room temperature, which will be this readout here. And then the next one, if we push it again, you can see will be furnace. Again, we'll use the up, down arrows to set our desired room temperature, except the furnace will come on instead of the air conditioner. Push it again, it's going to go off. So this has a big slider window on it which is also going to be considered a fire exit window, which is why it says emergency exit and has the red handle on it. Bigger window that you can climb out of if you need to. It's going to open up just like the other slider window behind the sink. Um, our dinette here can be made down into a bed. Our, our table's already down to the bed position. Um, the way that works is it just sits down on those little uh, black ledges there. So the tabletop just sits on that. And then we just fold our cushions down to make the bed. Like a soap. Uh, to put it back into table, into a table, uh, we've got to get the legs out. Now the legs are stored in this um, under seat storage here. You can store them whatever, wherever works for you. Just put these down here into the uh, floor first. There we go, that's better. So when you put your table up, um, you'll see that the uh, it's kind of offset where the uh, legs go and it kind of hangs over. If you put it on the wrong way, the table's gonna hang way out into the aisle. It's designed to go the other way so it actually goes towards the wall. Um, now there is also a travel strap so when this table's down into the bed position, this strap is actually designed to come over the table and clip onto this loop here on the floor. And that's gonna keep the table stationary while you're traveling down the road so it doesn't bounce around and damage anything. So moving back to our bunks, upper and lower, we've got uh, lights with the push buttons. The upper bunk light is on the ceiling. We do have a uh, dual USB charge port here for it as well. And we also have a privacy curtain um, here that can be put into place like this. So that whoever's up there can have a little bit of privacy. Now this is rated at a 300 pound capacity. Uh, bottom bunk uh, is gonna be a little bit bigger. Uh, we've got the light on the wall instead of on the ceiling. Again, another double USB charge port and that hook all the way on the back is for the tilt up portion of this for storage underneath. Again, we do have a privacy curtain here as well. Now there is some long storage space here underneath the bed that can be used. Um, but that pretty much covers our main cabin area. Let's check out the uh, bathroom in here. So this is gonna be a dry bath, uh, which means our toilet is separate from our shower. Uh, this is gonna be a foot flush toilet. So whenever you use this, you're gonna push the pedal halfway down. That's gonna put water just in the bowl of the toilet. Um, once you do your thing, you're gonna push the pedal all the way down. That's gonna open up the blade at the bottom of the toilet and allow everything to go down into the black tank. You're gonna to wanna to use plenty of water here and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're using some type of black tank treatment for waste management or waste digestion and then a um, odor neutralizer or something along those lines if you want to control odors. Um, our light switch is right here on the wall. It's just gonna be for our overhead light which is also right next to our GoPower solar controller. So again, this trailer is equipped with a solar panel and this is gonna be the controller for it. Um, once we finish getting things set up here, we'll set the, uh, the battery type and all of that. And from there, it's pretty much doing its own thing. Huh. Um, so we've, we are equipped with a max fan in the bathroom here. So these fans are capable of 900 cubic feet per minute. Uh, to get this thing open, you're just gonna pull down on the little crank mechanism here, and then we're just gonna crank it open. It 
And once you get it open, then you can either choose your fan speeds. You've got one through four on here. Um, or you can just run the fan off if you want to do it that way. Now, the cool thing about these are is that the housing is already prepped to take a um, Max Air Fan Mate, which is designed almost specifically for this fan. It goes right on, takes two, uh, four clips to clip it on. It's very easy to put on, and it's a great add for weather. Uh, so you can run this fan when it's raining or anything like that out or in storage. Uh, you can keep it open. You don't have to worry about a bunch of stuff getting in. Um, you got your medicine cabinet in here, hot cold faucet for the uh, washing your hands. Again, we do have a waterless P trap on this, so again, no mechanical cleanouts, no plungers, anything like that. It's going to be the same for the shower. Uh, the shower door is held closed with a magnet, so this actually slides over and then has a magnet strip that holds it to the wall over there. Shower head's going to be, the shower head's got your flow control lever button on it. Uh, one way is going to be full flow, the other way is going to be more of a dribble. Um, you're limited on the amount of hot water, so we use flow control heads in our showers. Again, just hot and cold mixing, not a whole lot there. All right, guys, I think that covers everything on the Ibex 19 MBH trailer. Uh, but if I've missed anything, don't hesitate to give us a call or reach out, email, whatever works for you. Um, again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.